Okay, so what we're going to do is just go over some basic atomic structure stuff. I assume that you know this from freshman year, probably sophomore year also, because I know you do some chemistry then. Uh, but just in case you don't, or just in case you need a refresher, here we go. So first up, there's three subatomic particles that we're going to talk about. We will uh, be exposed to some smaller particles. Uh, these subatomic particles are actually made of smaller ones. Um, for now, we'll focus on electron, protons, and neutrons, but you should know what they are, where they're located, and what their charge are. So let's start with electrons. Electrons, we usually abbreviate it with an E and a little minus sign since it's negative, and the electrons are zipping around here outside the, the nucleus. They're in the electron cloud. The protons, we usually abbreviate them with a little P and a plus sign because they're positive, and neutrons are a little N and a zero because they're neutral, and these two guys are found here inside the nucleus. Now, the artist drew this picture, and it looks nice. We've got a fuzzy electron cloud. We've got the nucleus. We could see the parts and stuff. It looks great. However, this is way too big when we compare the nucleus to the size of the overall atom. Uh, the nucleus is unbelievably tiny, and we'll get into that a little bit more in detail in class. So protons, neutrons, electrons, know what they are, what their charge is, and where they're located. The nuclear atom. Now we're going to look at a lot of different models. This is what we're eventually going to come down to. We're going to see this fuzzy electron cloud where the electrons zip around, and we're going to see this tight, densely packed, positively charged nucleus. Notice that it's positively charged. This has no charge, so the positive wins. Overall charge of the nucleus is positive. And then the overall charge of the electron cloud is negative. So the electrons zip around here, protons and neutrons inside the nucleus. And once again, just looking at it another way, we've got this fuzzy electron cloud where the electrons are. And this electron cloud, we're going to spend a couple weeks on this. The electron cloud is actually divided into energy levels. Uh, we're going to put a certain number of electrons into each. You might have learned the 288 business. You might have even learned 2818. We'll talk about what that all means, but it all comes down to that, that energy level and the breakdown of the location of the electrons. So this is where we are now, and this is what we currently believe. Now, just kind of as a frame of reference here, I know I mentioned already that the nucleus was drawn way too large compared to the size of the atom. But if the artist draw it to scale, you wouldn't have been able to see the nucleus. So it would have looked like he actually forgot the nucleus. Um, but just think about this. If you were to go to a gigantic football stadium, picture this gigantic stadium, and go down to the 50-yard line on the field and put a little tiny marble on the 50-yard line, that would represent the size of the nucleus if the rest of the stadium was the electron cloud. So the electron cloud is huge compared to the little tiny marble. Marble is on the 50-yard line. That's protons and neutrons. And the electron cloud is where the electrons are. Just like if 10 of us went and sat in those seats and the rest of the stadium was empty, we could sit in any of those seats. The electron cloud is a region for electrons to be anywhere within. We'll learn that they're going to be in certain areas, but they could be anywhere in there, depending on how much energy they have. But that's their space, the electron cloud. And the protons and neutrons are stuck inside that little, little, little tiny marble on the 50-yard line. Again, just to give you an idea here of size, if the whole atom is 1 times 10 to the negative 10th, which is small, 0 0.0000000, what's that, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1. That's how small. And remember, every time you move from one place to the next, it's 10 times smaller and 10 times smaller and 10 times smaller. So this is unbelievably small. And then you start looking at the size of the overall atom to just the nucleus, and then break down the nucleus into its components, and then break down um, the whole atom into just the electrons. The electrons are actually so small that we don't even count their mass. Uh, but we do know that they play a major role in how atoms act and how they behave and bond and so forth. So they are important, obviously. This is another diagram here of what we currently know, protons and neutrons making up the nucleus. And then I gave you a kind of a heads up earlier. I said that we do know that those protons and neutrons are actually made of smaller particles. Uh, we're not going to get into it too much in detail, but if you take a higher level science class, you'll probably touch on this quite a bit. Neutrons, real quick, they're neutrally charged. They're found inside the nucleus with the protons. Here's their mass. Put a G next to that. Take a look at how unbelievably tiny that mass is. This is why uh, experimenters came up with the AMU. This is equal to one AMU. It's basically a unit that they use because this is way, way, way too small. 
Okay, protons and the atomic number. The atomic number is a whole number on the periodic table. So if you look at your periodic table, you're going to see a lot of information. You'll see the atomic number, and then you'll also see a fraction for most elements, and that's the atomic mass, which are two different things. But we're going to talk about the atomic number, which is a whole number on the periodic table. And that's how the periodic table is arranged, by the way. The intent, you should know that. Um, the atomic mass does go up, but there are some instances where it doesn't go up. Um, so the atomic number is how the periodic tables arranged and this always increases. In any case, the atomic number is equal to the number of protons in the nucleus. So atomic number equals atomic number equals number of protons. Take a look at this. This should look familiar because the mass of the proton is equal to the mass of the neutron. So if a neutron was a 1 AMU, so is a proton. The two things are equal, neutrons and protons. And we'll see how it's not equal to an uh, electron. So the protons identify the element. It tells you what element it is. If I told you that an element had six protons, you would immediately look on a periodic table and realize, hey, the atomic number is six, therefore it's carbon. If an atom, atom has seven protons, then you would look and you'd say the atomic number seven, therefore it's nitrogen. And if you saw eight, you would say it's oxygen. So you can look at the periodic table and say, what's the atomic, or what's the number of protons? That'll tell you the atomic number, which is the same thing, and that'll tell you the element that it is. Once again, protons identify the elements. Every atom of the same element has the same number of protons. We're going to see that the protons has to stay the same. However, electrons can come and go, literally. We'll talk about how they bond and electrons coming and leaving. And we'll talk about uh, the number of neutrons differing. We can have isotopes, same element, but different, num different number of neutrons. So the neutrons could differ, electrons could differ, but protons have to be the same. Okay, mass number. It says, since the mass of an electron is so tiny, we're not even going to worry about it when we consider the mass of an atom. So the electrons don't count. It's kind of like going to the beach and saying, here's a bucket of sand. Go put it on a scale and weigh it. And then I say, oh, here, add one more grain of sand to the bucket. Is it going to change the overall mass? No. So we're going to ignore the mass of the electrons when we consider the mass number, which leaves us to whatever is just in the bucket all of that stuff in the bucket, which is going to be what's giving it majority of its weight, and that's the protons and the neutrons. So the mass number is equal to protons plus neutrons. You should know this already. Um, but what, what is important, what I want to stress, is that the mass number is different than the atomic mass. This mass number is saying what's in one particular atom that I'm looking at right now, not looking at an average. It's kind of like saying, what did you get on one particular assignment in class? Not, not your overall average for the quarter, just what did you get on one grade, one particular assignment. Now let's look at carbon. All carbon atoms have six protons. That never changes. But some have six neutrons, some have seven neutrons, some have eight neutrons. Therefore, they're going to have different mass numbers. If I have six protons and six neutrons, I end up with a mass number of 12. If I have six protons and seven neutrons, I have 13, and you get the idea here. Six plus eight is 14. So I'm going to have different mass numbers, but number of protons, six, six, and six, always stays the same. Once again, when you look at a periodic table, the atomic mass is this number written here. It is not the, at or the mass number. The mass number, you have to actually see a picture or get information about a particular atom. And you have to look inside the nucleus and say what's in there. This has one thing in the nucleus, therefore it has a mass number of one. This has two things, one proton, one neutron, so therefore it's going to have a mass number of two. And this one has three things, therefore it's going to have a mass number of three. So mass number is not the atomic mass. These are all hydrogens. They all have one proton. This is hydrogen. This is the average if I averaged all these guys. And you might be saying, well, wait a minute. If I average the numbers 1, 2, and 3, isn't the average going to be 2? Isn't that right in the middle? And that is true. That's the way you guys were taught to do averages since you've been little kids. But what you haven't been taught yet, I'll teach it to you in class, is a weighted average. What if you got a whole bunch of 1s and very few 2s and 3s? Then the average has to be shift closer to the one that's more abundant. So we'll talk about that in class. But that's how you get this number here which is different than the mass numbers.
Okay, so let's do just a quick little bit of math here with this. We'll take it a little bit farther. If I tell you uh, in school that my classroom is made of, I don't know, 20 total kids, just like inside my nucleus, I have 20 total particles. And I tell you that, um, I don't know, 12 of them are boys, or I tell you 12 of these particles are protons, could you figure out how many are neutrons? Could you figure out how many are girls? Because we know that boys and girls obviously make up the class. 20 minus 12 is 8 girls. And over here, 20 minus 12 is 8 of the other things that are in the nucleus, just like the other sex that's in the classroom. So these are going to be 8 neutrons. So we can look at this formula and say, if I know one thing, if I know the total, I could subtract one part and get the other part. And one part is going to be protons. The other part is going to be neutrons or vice versa. Either way, the two parts add up to the total. So look at example here. How many neutrons are found in the nucleus of a nitrogen atom with a mass number 15? If the grand total is 15 and it's nitrogen, we know something about nitrogen. We can look on the periodic table and say it's atomic number 7. So 15 minus 7 equals 8 neutrons. That's how many neutrons we have. But please remember, the mass number is not the same as the atomic mass. I know it's got the same word in it, but they are different. Electrons, real quick, here's a nice picture of them zipping around. Here's another picture that we're going to uh, look at quite a bit of locations of all the electrons and kind of where they're found if we could just follow one electron all over the place. Uh, these guys are much smaller than protons and neutrons. The word much doesn't even do it justice. Look at this mass. I know we saw times 10 to the negative 24th, but every time you move over, it gets 10 times smaller, 10 times smaller. 10. It's already pretty small. And then you go 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, and that's much, much, much smaller. Now, electrons equals protons. So if we have a neutral atom, and we always assume the word atom means neutral, then the number of electrons is going to equal protons. So if we have 15 electrons, we're going to have 15 protons. Now, that means they're neutral. It doesn't mean they're happy that way. A lot of them don't like it that way, so they're going to have to do something to change. And what they're going to do is change the number of electrons. Protons always has to stay the same unless you have a nuclear reaction happening. But the electrons can change. And then we don't call it an atom, we call it an ion. So neutral, protons equals electrons. You got one, you've got one. You got six, you got six. You got 79, 79. They have to be equal. All right, so now let's take a look at the opposite of atoms, which are ions. Now, we said I atoms are neutral, protons equals electrons. Ions are the opposite. Protons do not equal electrons. Either there's more electrons or there's less electrons than protons. Protons, this is important, write this down, Protons never changes. So if you have an element, it's always going to have the same number of protons. But the electrons can come and go. You can have more electrons or less electrons. Now, you might end up with a positive ion. If you have 12 protons and only 10 electrons, you're going to end up with canceling 10 electrons out with 10 of these guys, and you're going to have two protons left. So that makes a positive 2 charge. So if you look at this example here, it's 12 protons, so that immediately tells me that it's magnesium. And then if I compare my 12 protons, 12 positive charges, with my 10 electrons, 10 negatives, then again, I have plus 2 charge. If I have a negative ion, that means that I have more negatives. So you have, or whatever it is, is what you have more of. So if you have a uh, positive ion, it's because you have more positives. If you have a negative ion, it's because you have more negatives. If they're equal, it's neutral. We don't call it an ion. We call it an atom if they're equal. All right, so negative ion. Imagine that I have 17 protons. So in my nucleus, I have 17 protons. I look on the periodic table. I automatically know that that's chlorine. It'll always have 17 protons. But again, the number of electrons can come or go. So my electrons are going to go up to 18. So if I count all these little electrons around the outside here, it's going to equal 18. If I have 17 of those and 18 of those, 17 protons cancel, 17 electrons cancel, leaving me with one extra electron. So chlorine is going to have a negative one charge when I'm all done with this, with comparing protons and electrons. So ions, charge, atoms, neutral. Representing atomic and mass numbers with nuclear symbols. So this is a new way, kind of a handy-dandy shortcut way, to write everything you need to know about an atom. If you look at all of these, there's a big number on top, 
smaller number on the bottom. Big, small, big, small. So we're always going to have the big number on top, and it's big because it's protons plus neutrons. So the big number is positive protons and neutrons, so this is the mass number. On the bottom is going to be the small number. It's only protons. And guess what? If you have this big number and you subtract the small number, for instance, if this is 20 and this is 10, you subtract 20 minus 10 and you're left with 10, which would be equal to the neutrons. If you have, in this case, 12 minus 6. 12 is protons and neutrons. 6 is just protons. Subtract out the protons, you're left with neutrons, which is going to be 6 neutrons left over. If you had, um, I don't know, let's do chlorine. <clears throat> you had 35 and 17. This is just protons. This is protons and neutrons. So you take 35 minus 17, and you know that there's 18 neutrons, and of course, 17 protons. And you add them together, and voila, you get 35. All right, so that's everything you should know already about atomic structure, plus you have your online activity, the simulation. So make sure you ask any questions that you have in class, get the stuff down pat, and then we're going to move on and make it a little bit more complicated in class.